All right, kids, my earliest memory of the greatest rivalry in college football, in all of sports, Ohio State versus Michigan, was a game that ended in a tie. In 1992, the final score was Buckeyes 13 and Wolverines 13. And almost every single game after that, and even highlights from games before, have haunted my very thought. The name Bianca Batuka has caused me harm. Ah, that footage, it was so grainy. But then came January 18, 2001, when Coach Jim Trestle and his sweater vest was hired to replace John Cooper as coach of the Buckeyes. And Ohio State just so happened to be hosting a men's basketball game later on that night after his introductory press conference. And that game was against Michigan. At halftime, Trestle said this. I'm proud of our young people in the classroom, in the community, and most especially in 310 days in Ann Arbor, Michigan, on the football field. Standard definition. What you just saw there will forever be known as the 310 day speech. Now, while Trestle didn't guarantee a win there, he did flip the rivalry. In the 19 games from 2001, the year I graduated from high school, to 2019, the Buckeyes beat the team up north 17 times, including Trestle going 9-1, and one, and then eight straight victories starting in 2012 with Urban Meyer and Ryan Day leading the teams respectively. Would have been nine straight if Michigan didn't cancel the big game in 2020 due to COVID when they were 31-point underdogs a year after they lost by 29 at home. And while I love the 90s, it's for that reason and many more that I never want to go back there. Well, somehow, some way, the Wolverines took it to my silver bullets the previous two seasons, and they have a good chance at making it three straight this year for the first time since 1997. And as of a few weeks ago, we may know how and why. In the video, then Ohio State quarterback C.J. Stroud is seen backing off the formation and looking to the Buckeye sideline. In the background, Stallions appears to look in the direction of the Ohio State sideline, as do other players. Yahoo Sports first broke the story and ESPN confirmed that it was Connor Stallions who led to the Big Ten Conference and the University of Michigan being notified by the NCAA that the NCAA was investigating allegations of sign stealing by the University of Michigan football program. And since October 19th, it seems like we learn something new about Stallions every day. I mean, he's apparently written a five or six hundred page manifesto, which can't be good. Nothing positive has ever come from a manifesto. You just know that he isn't contemplating how to free Palestine. By the way, free Palestine. Now, you can see Connor Stallions during games next to Michigan's offensive and defensive coordinators. Here he is celebrating a win after the game with former Michigan defensive lineman Aiden Hutchinson and head coach Jim Harbaugh. And here he is on the sidelines at Central Michigan. This is like the least sexy game of Where's Waldo I've ever seen in my life. For every new development in this scandal, there's a Michigan man defending their alma mater as if there's nothing to see here. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Thus far, I've heard three main arguments from them. What Connor Stallions did wasn't illegal. Michigan didn't even need to steal signs. And Coach Jim Harbaugh had no idea of what was going on. Let's start with what Connor Stallions did wasn't illegal. So, the investigation is to determine whether Michigan violated NCAA bylaw 11.6.1, which states that off-campus, in-person scouting of future opponents in the same season is prohibited. Sign stealing is not prohibited under NCAA rules, but team officials are not allowed to scout future opponents in person or use electronic devices to transmit data. The bylaw was passed in 1994 as a cost-cutting measure designed to promote equity for programs that couldn't afford to send scouts to other games, according to this article from M Live. So, while NFL coaches can communicate with their players, especially the quarterback, through headsets and their helmets, in college they use these boards with characters, pictures, and shapes on them, looking like a not-so-sexy game of Twister. You should know that bylaw 11.6.1 also prohibits an institution from, quote, employing or paying the expenses of someone else, including professional scouting services, to scout the opponent. Per reports, Stallions was making around $50,000 per year from Michigan, but was able to pay for two tickets for multiple games over the course of two years. Lower bowl, near the 50-yard line? Nah. Pretty much, Connor Stallion stealing signs isn't illegal, just like keeping and storing Sinbad's toenails isn't illegal. Okay, there's no law against it, but 
It's wrong. Moving on to Michigan didn't need to steal signs. Due to the rule I mentioned a minute ago, team sharing all 22 film has become common practice. The all 22 is a bird's eye view of all players on the field for every play of the game, which also includes footage of the sidelines. So yeah, ideally, Michigan or any team doesn't need to steal signs. However, we already know which teams Connor Stallions gained info from because his name showed up when schools checked the paper trails. He bought two tickets to each game and apparently gave them to friends, family, and associates to record the front and back of a team's sidelines. That was for every team in the Big Ten multiple times, and OSU seems to have been the most. But also, Georgia, who beat Michigan in the CFP playoffs in 2021, yet they chose not to scout TCU ahead of time the one team that beat the Wolverines last year. Weird. To give the Horn Frogs credit, they were seemingly aware of Michigan's science stealing scheme and used dummy signs during their game versus TTUN. And honestly, should every team do that? Yes. But TCU had 25 days in between the Big 12 championship game and their playoff game in order to do so. Besides, I don't think you can get all this information from the all 22s or videos online. And yes, Knowing what play is coming gives you an advantage. Do you still need to stop it? Of course. Even in basketball, Larry Bird used to tell people what he would do before doing it and still be able to pull it off, whatever he said. And he ran as fast and jumped as high as you'd expect a man who had this mustache would. Not good. Here's what I mean. This clip I played towards the beginning of my video from the news where Ohio State scored on the next snap, even though Stallion seemingly called out the play. Well, look at this clip. Aiden Hutchinson, I showed him and Coach Harbaugh celebrating at the end of this game earlier. He knows a screen is coming. He gives space and opportunity for the sake of plausible deniability, but he's ready either way. With all that said, Coach Jim Harbaugh, according to Michigan men, didn't tell Connor Stallions to do any of this, and he had no idea of what was going on. It's here that I need to say that both Jim Harbaugh and Connor Stallions deny allegations of stealing signs with Harbaugh claiming he didn't know about signs being stolen and hasn't told anyone to steal signs. And, as of a day ago, Stallions is no longer with the team. But if the highest paid state employee in Michigan would have been the highest paid coach in all of the Big Ten if the offer hadn't been rescinded, had no idea that a lower level staff member who provided him and his coaches and coordinators with an insane amount of insight for 20-something games truly didn't know then his oversight and institutional failure to the nth degree. How is that better? You just know that when Coach Harbaugh watches Ratatouille the night before games for the sake of inspiration, he screams at the TV because how could Skinner not know that Linguini is being controlled by Remy pulling his hair? The most sexy hair pulls. And if you're keeping score at home, plus if you're here because of my political commentary, Michigan men are starting to sound like Trumpers did with Donald. He didn't do that, and if he did, he didn't mean to. He didn't say that, and if he did, he didn't mean it. And if he did, you didn't understand it. And if you did, it's no big deal. And if it is, others have said worse. With that said, the bad takes aren't just coming from Michigan men. Harbaugh's teams are physical, and they pound it, and he finally got the right quarterback. Call me nutty, but I think they're dominating now because they finally have a first-round quarterback in J.J. McCarthy, not because they stole an alligator, a sandwich sign, and Scott Van Pelt's face on a board. Cade McNamara was Michigan's quarterback when they beat OSU in 2021. Not McCarthy. Maybe it's not that. And Michigan has been blowing teams out this year due in part to their terrible strength of schedule. Even with the Wolverines stomping on my Buckeyes the last two years, Coach Harbaugh is still 2-5 and five in the game. Him and Michigan haven't done anything that OSU hasn't done or seen. Wisconsin pulled off a couple of wins against OSU in the 2000s. Michigan State did too in the 2010s. You mean to tell me that it took Harbaugh five years to figure it out? Strategically, when Ryan Day is coaching OSU football and not Urban Meyer? If you think Ohio State is desperate after losing two in a row, just imagine what you do after losing five straight to your rival. Michigan is already under NCAA investigation for a series of level two rule violations that include Harbaugh meeting with recruits during a COVID dead period, using too many coaches in practice, and watching player workouts on Zoom. The school suspended Harbaugh for the first three games of the season after a negotiated resolution between the school and the NCAA for a four-game suspension collapsed. 
The case is expected to be heard after the 2023 season. Then, former OSU head football coach Urban Meyer had the nerve to say that he doesn't trust what the media has been saying about these investigations so far. And come on, Urban Meyer is currently an analyst with Fox. All he has to do is ask the coaches in the Big Ten what evidence and proof they have, and they would give it to him. Here's the coach from Purdue who just got blown out by Michigan last week, by the way. You know, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, and, and what's crazy is it's, there aren't allegations. Like, it, it happened. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and, you know, there's video evidence. There's um, ticket purchases and sales that you can track back. And, you know, we know for a fact that they were at a number of our games. Plus, former Ohio State running back Maurice Claret said, in his humble opinion, Harbaugh is the only person who spoke like this, and this is against the core of what the NCAA stands for. It's major exploitation on lots of levels, and you can't have a premier coach on a premier football team championing this type of mission. Referring to the fact that Harbaugh has made an open stance about wanting to share TV revenue with the athletes, but it took a six-second duck-duck-go search to figure out that Penn State coach James Franklin has said the same thing. He's not getting dealt with, as Claret will put it. There's tons of smart people sitting in boardrooms executing well-thought-out missions of how to keep what's in place in place. And they must have forgotten to go after Coach Franklin. Are these the three people you want agreeing with you? Oh, oh. Michigan reportedly has evidence its sign-stealing scandal was uncovered and leaked by private investigators with ties to Ryan Day. Okay. Even if that was true, again, other teams knew what Michigan was doing. Awfully kept secret. There's no way I can allow myself to think of next season. And as of me recording this, the game is in about three weeks. And since it's in Ann Arbor, and with the Wolverines rolling this year against nobody so far, they should be favorites over my Buckeyes. But somebody somewhere should provide schools with headsets to help with communication. We have the technology and make a rule about recording signs and sidelines. Be proactive about other bylaws. Coaches having better oversight. And I'm not sure of what Michigan or the NCAA should or could do with Jim Harbaugh. This kind of cheating is unprecedented. I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed, and I wouldn't be shocked if he got fired. Either way, no Buckeye is afraid of him. Look, Coach Tressel and Coach Meyer were relieved of their duties here at OSU for doing far less than what's going on at TTUN. They're not bigger than the football program. They're not bigger than the university. This is the Ohio State University. We're not going back to what's known as the John Cooper era. Coach Cooper led the Buckeyes to a 2-10-1 record against the team up north. Most of that time was during the 90s when there were at least two Buckeye teams, 95 and 96, that were the best in the country but didn't matter when it came to the last game of the year for both schools. Is the sign-stealing scandal the reason why TTUN has beaten Ohio State? I don't know. But just like the Houston Astros, if Big Blue continues to win, then there will be less excuses. However, if Ohio State continues to lose the game, OSU men won't give Coach Ryan Day a chance to lose five straight. We're going to be all right.